Hi everybody, it's Sally here. Um, we've now got quite a few members on our lovely group. And for those people who are new to machine knitting or just got a machine, it seems that the same questions are cropping up um, repeatedly. And so I thought it might be useful if I made this video showing how to unpack and prepare your machine for use. It's going to be mostly aimed at people who've bought a second-hand machine, but there's going to be information in here as well for those of you that have got a new one. Um, and the type of machine I'm looking at is the uh, punch card patterning machine that uses the drum pattern mechanism, and that will be these. Um, in the UK they were known as Knitmaster and Empizel, now they're known as Silver Reed. Elsewhere they're known as Singer and Studio, but they are basically all the same machine. As I say, it's the 24 stitch punch card machine that uses the drum patterning. However, this information will also work if you've got a fine gauge machine, the 270 or the 370, and also the bulky, the 155. So, um, first things first. I know that once you've got your machine, the first thing you want to do is going to take it out of its box and knit something. Um, well, patience is a virtue, so they say. And just spend a little time getting used to your machine, making sure it's working properly before you leap in there and try and knit something. Um, first thing I think to consider is where are you going to put it? They're big things. I mean, these things are like four foot wide, over a metre wide. They're heavy. Uh, you really, if you can, need to find a place where you can leave your machine set up so you don't have to keep packing it away. I know that's not going to be practical for some people, but if you can, it's it's a good idea. You know, Get a little space for your machine where you can leave it. It needs quite a lot of room around it as well, because when you start to knit, the carriage will be coming off the end of the machine, so you need space at the end. Don't put your table right up against a wall. Mine is not in the most ideal position because ideally I'd like it a bit nearer the window, but I've got it in my room. It's upstairs out of the way. Me and my husband are the only people that come up here, so it's uh, not going to get knocked or bashed by anybody. I've also got a nice big bright light there to illuminate what I'm doing with a spot on it. And it's on a, a mine is a bespoke machine knitting table. Um, you can buy these tilt tables, they're expensive but they're lovely. You can buy very basic, straightforward melamine tables on like trestle legs. Or if you haven't got that, you need a flat surface with straight edges that you can clamp the machine to. And uh, it's got to be sturdy enough to take the weight of it. These things weigh, I don't know, pounds. And if you then put a ribber or a ribbing attachment on afterwards, it's going to double the weight that's going to go on your table. So it needs to be sturdy enough to take that weight. And also the the motion of you actually machine knitting um, and say find a, a, a nice little spot for it a place where you can also have your other stuff around you because you will accumulate a lot of paraphernalia take it from me and space behind the machine on the table to stand your wool if you can't put it on the floor or your things of tools etc etc Get a good comfy chair as well. If you're going to be sitting for a while at your machine, you don't want to be sitting on something that's going to give you backache or knee ache. As we all get older, we get enough of that anyway without having a horrible chair that's going to add to it. And like I said earlier, plenty of good light, natural light if possible, but artificial light if, if not. Okay, so you've got this lovely machine home. What are you going to do with it? Woohoo! So hopefully after you've unpacked it out of its box that it was either posted you in or you've collected it in, it should, with luck, be still inside its protective case. If you've got a box of bits, okay, well we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but if, if you've got a good machine and it's in its case, this is what it'll look like. Put it on the table with the clamps at the back, i.e. away from you, and obviously the badge on the top. And the first thing to do is to undo the clip at the back and remove the lid. Pull it towards you and tip it up. And your lovely machine is revealed. And inside the lid, there are some other bits and pieces. So let's just pop this at the back here for a minute. 
This is actually a, a Knitmaster 700 machine and the toolbox is fitted into the back of the machine on the right hand side. But most of them have the accessories in a box like this which is usually sitting on the, on the machine. Take that away and just put it at the back or somewhere safely out of the way for a minute. And so there's your knitting bed and there's your carriage on your machine. This should be locked to the machine with a carriage lock bar here. Um, that's to keep it safe whilst it's in transit so it doesn't thrash up and down here and get damaged. And the handle should be turned down also so that you can get the lid on the machine. That just flips up into place like that and you unscrew this sink knob here to release the carriage and that just comes out and lifts away. Keep it safe because if you want to pack your machine away to move it ever you need to be able to relock your carriage back down and put it in your toolbox. Now, hopefully if your machine is in good condition the carriage will be able to slide up and down the rail at the back. If your carriage doesn't do this I'm afraid it probably means that the drums at the back here have seized. And I'm going to take mine off here to show you what I mean. And these drums should spin freely. And if they don't, they're either gummed up with bits of stray yarn or they're all uh, clagged up with old oil. I mean, if you open the box of your machine and it smells very musty, that is also going to be old oil on here. But if unfortunately your machine, your carriage, is stuck on your machine and you can't move it, maybe I think the, the tried and tested method that I would use to try and free those drums up so you can ease it off the machine, for goodness sake, don't force it or wrench it because you'll damage it, um, is to use a hairdryer. So, here she goes. Being in my bedroom, I've got one handy. Get your hairdryer, turn it on and just fan it at the back of the drums here. I'm going to... like that. Keep doing that for several minutes, alternating between the drums every couple of minutes until you start to feel it free. Move it along a little bit and do the same thing again. And just keep repeating that, fanning it with the hairdryer. Might take several minutes until you've got enough ease on here to take the carriage off the bed. Slide it off gently to the side. And at this point, I'm gonna recommend that you head off to YouTube. I'm gonna put this back because it's heavy. For information and advice on how to clean that carriage because you will need to clean it before you can start knitting. Um, I had some information somewhere, I've had my hand. Well, the other thing I was going to say is check that your machine has come with its instruction book. If it hasn't, go and get one off the internet. They're usually free to download. The instruction books can be got off of this website, www.machineknittingetc.com and YouTube. Uh, go and have a look for the answer lady. The answer lady asks Jack. Um, they call them Singer and Studio machines, but it means the same thing. Knitmaster, Empizel, Silver Reed, they're all the same. And they there give very comprehensive videos and instructions on taking this apart and cleaning those drums out. And I say, if they, if they don't spin freely, like you saw me do in the video just, just then, you really need to get those drums cleaned and re-oiled. I'm not going to go into it here because I say it's covered you know, adequately, or more than adequately, on YouTube already. And so we can move on to the next thing. Right, let me find my instruction books for this. I always say to a new knitter, if you've got your instruction book, read it, then read it again, and then just for good measure, read it a third time. Um, depending on the model of the machine, sometimes you get one book, sometimes you get a series. The 700 came with three separate books. The one you want here is the operation manual. And open it up, 
and the first thing it will show you is the machine and the accessories. So check that you've got everything that's listed on these pages. Shows you how to unpack the machine. Have you got the sinker plate assembly in the lid? Yes. Oops. Have you got a yarn mast? Yes. Have you got the overhead yarn assembly? Uh, the auto tension? Yes, I have. So open up the toolbox. There's all the tools in there. Have I got the punch cards? Have I got the rulers, the knit radar sheets, etc, etc, etc. So go all the way through it. And then in your accessory box, you should have a lot of little gadgets. Um, mine in a tub down here. Pack them all away. You should have your transfer tools, your needle pushers. Claw weights, a couple of these things which you use to weight your knitting, um, and a ravel cord, um, some clips to clip your carriages together, and other things like the magic cans for single motif knitting, uh, yarn separators, blah blah blah. blah. Well, if you're going to attach the table, the machine to the table, the most important thing you're going to need are the two clamps. So let's put this on one side for a minute and have a look for one clamps. And here they are. So we're going to just line the, the slots underneath the machine where you clamp it to the table right up to the edge and clamp the machine down. Turn them fairly tight, as tight as you can turn by hand, because you don't want this thing sliding around. Um, I've never actually done it myself, but I have heard stories of people whose machine, especially if it's got the ribbing attachment on it, sliding off the table and into their laps. And the last thing you want is like 40 pounds of metal landing in your lap, especially if bits of it are quite sharp. So secure your machine to the table. Right, so assuming that your carriage is in good condition and is rolling up and down the needle bed quite nicely, that's one of the things I really love about this 700 machine. Look, I can push that with my finger. Brilliant. This, I think, in my opinion, was the best punch card machine that has ever been made. Made in Japan, and it'll last forever. Certainly see me out. Um, now, the other thing to check, let's take this off for a minute is the state of your needles. Hopefully they will not be all rusty and ucky and they will be nice and clean. Pull them out and have a good look at them. These ones, if I just hopefully aim that in a bit, as you can see, are all nice and clean. Again, if the needles are rusted or got dirty marks on them, you'll need to take them out and clean them or even replace them. Um, you can't knit with rusty needles, simple as. So, um, that's a bit of a painful chore, taking all 200 needles out of a needle bed and cleaning them, but I'm afraid if you've got a, a dirty old machine, that's something you're going to have to do. Oh, I should have mentioned, really, that might at the beginning of the video, that uh, if you're going to start playing around with a second-hand machine that you suspect might need a bit of TLC, Wear old clothes, wear old black clothes as well, because you might get covered in grease, because uh, these things have oil on them. So now, in order to take the needles out of the machine, you're going to need to remove what's called the sponge bar or the needle retaining bar, usually, and it's this that holds these needles nicely taut into the slots on the machine so that you can actually knit the needle bar runs across here, sponge bar, and just through this little slot here, I don't know if you can see where my finger is poking, you should be able to see a bit of sponge poking down. And your needle retaining bar should have a good eight millimeters or so of sponge on it. Just for the purposes of illustration, I have got a couple here. That's a new one, as you can see, nice and thick. That is what you might well find inside your machine. If it looks like that, take it out and, well, if not, throw it away. Get rid of all this crappy old dead sponge in here. You can refurbish them by 
putting the sponge and sticking it in yourself but uh, I personally prefer to buy a complete bar if I can although I know in some places you might not be able to, to, to find a, a local supplier so that's the, the lovely difference between the dead one and the new one it needs to be like that if it isn't get another one jewellery making pliers in my machine toolbox and to get this sponge bar out you have to go to the slot at one end of the machine poke it uh, so that the end pops out on the other side uh, it should show you how to do this in the maintenance bit of your instruction book and it usually comes up in the section of replacing a damaged needle. So in here to replace a damaged needle is on page 45. So yeah, to replace a damaged needle. It tells you there in there about the needle uh, retaining bar, sponge bar, and about how to remove it. So let's pull this one out. A little bit of encouragement. I'm going to take it right the way out. See, mine is, is getting a little bit flat, uh, but it's still in relatively good condition. So compared to the new one, I've still got about... Uh, it's only sunk by a couple of millimetres, so that's still going to be in good nick. I can put that back. And as you can see, with the needle retaining bar out, the needles are now all springy, they're not held down flat onto the surface of the needle bed. And if you need to replace a needle because you've got broken latch or it's gone all rusty, you just pull it forward, flip it up and then make sure the latch is shut and then flip it out the back of the machine. And there's your needle. As you can see, mine is now is quite nice and clean and the latch opens and closes quite easily so all oh, my needles are in good condition and you'll need to go along and have a good look at them it isn't always possible to see if a needle is duff or not sometimes you'll only spot it once you start actually start to do some knitting so, so be it but just keep an eye out for it um, the other thing you need to check on the back of your needle bed is these two little rubber things here oh, let's see if i can aim the thing this is called a side rack and it's got like a little zigzaggy edge to it and it sits on the end of the the rail at the back that controls the uh the, the drum patterning with old machines they get um they can get brittle and uh crumble up and break up and and uh disintegrate completely um, if your side racks have done that you need to replace them they're not usually very expensive a couple of pounds you know, two or three dollars and there are lots of places that sell them um, if you run that carriage up and down the back here and you take it past the end of this rail and onto the side racks if your side racks aren't there, you can damage the drum patterning mechanism on your carriage. So I do really recommend that you replace them. And also, you will need them there if you're likely to be doing pattern knitting across the full width of your needle bed. Because this bit is what enables the drums to retain the correct pattern information from the punch card panel. So, having checked your sponge bar... And your needles you need to put the sponge bar back and now I need a ruler or something similar to put the tools there. and in order to put the sponge bar back you need to push these needles down the sponge bar goes in with the sponge bit down and it has to sit on top of the needles so I hope you can see what I'm doing here I'm in the right place let me get around and just check that you're looking at the right thing there we go. So I'm going to use my needle pusher with a flat edge to push those needles down and I'm going to push this needle retaining bar back in and as it goes across 
just keep pushing them down and sliding it in. Until it's gone all the way across and then you just need to push the end right in so that it's flush with the side of the needle bed so that now means the needles are not springing up and down they're all nicely tensioned into the slots on the knitting machine we're good to go now, if your machine is dirty covered in dirty smelly old oil then you will need to clean it um, white spirit is a good thing um, I usually keep a couple of rags that have been soaked in white spirit in an airtight like old takeaway container or something like that so that I've always got one to hand so I can give my machine a bit of a rub over it's just a bit of an old t-shirt lovely and stinky white spirit so that um, if I want to clean the, the needle bed I can just rub it over and as you can see, it's uh, they do get a bit grubby, they get grubby fairly quickly. You will also need to clean the underside of your carriage from time to time. Okay, this should be covered in your instruction book, but you'll need to clean all the, the fluff and dirt that gets inside this rail at the back here, and anything that gets trapped inside all these pathways underneath the carriage. Check also that your drums are spinning freely. These are the main pattern drums at the back of the carriage that pick up the patterning information from the punch card reader. And these are the sub drums that connect to them. You can see the two of them um, twiddle around in synchronicity. And that is what then transfers the um, instructions to the needles so the needles know which ones need to come forward and which ones need to go back or stay back for patterning. Um, new machines will come with a bottle of oil like that you don't need to use gallons of it just drops if you haven't got any then sewing machine oil is an acceptable substitute or some places sell these little oil pencils ballistal oil and um uh, gun oil is also considered to be um, an acceptable alternative, although for those of us that live in countries that uh, don't tend to have ready access to any kind of firearms, gun oil isn't always that easy to get hold of, but uh, these things are, are perfectly acceptable substitutes for, for the original oil that came with the machines. Um, check also that you know, you've got side levers on here, make sure that they're working. And then on your carriage, I've got oil all over it, I told you to wear black. <laughs> um, check when you twiddle the, the dial around here. This is what controls your stitch size. And you should see, I'm trying to see where it is. I lost it. I can't see which bit of it is that moves now. Uh, and also your cam lever here is what controls the different stitch patterns. So that slip and tuck, um, punch lace and fair isle. When you move that cam lever around, you should see levers moving up and down and things changing. And it should be uniform on both sides. So that one I'm moving it to slip. And you should see that both of those flippers moved when I I um, moved the cam lever. So let's put that back to stop in it. And put my carriage back on. It looks like it's good to go. So in the lid of your machine box, you've got spring-loaded clip uh, which will release the sinker plate 
This fits onto the front of the carriage and it's where you feed your yarn through. Check that underneath these rubber wheels are in good condition and these little plastic wheels and these brushes. If the brushes themselves are all fluffy and worn or if these bits of plastic underneath them are all raggedy and split and not flat, replace them. They're not expensive. And if you want to do weaving ever, you will knit weave, I should say, you'll need to have the weaving brushes in good condition. Um, these are, again, easily replaced, but they need to be nice and clean and not all dusty and stuck up with old bits of yarn uh, for your machine to work properly. And then with the needle, uh, the carriage on the needle bed, you just undo the knobs at the front, slide the sinker plate on and screw it down. And then the carriage should still move up and down freely. Again, I can still push mine with one finger. Uh, you then got your your overhead yarn assembly. You take that out the back there, and then the wires just flip round and click into place. And then you've got the rod that holds this in place. Uh, if you're using flatbed knitting, i.e. single bed, without the ribbing attachment, you want the bend in the rod to go away from you so that it points slightly backwards. And then this triangle bit that the yarn feeds through just flips up. I have seen so many questions that totally flummox people when they get a ribber. And they don't realise that when you put the river on, you have to turn this round. Because obviously your knitting is knitting machine is going to be tipped right up and then your yarn rod ends like this. And you don't want to do that. So if you put a river on, take it out and turn it around. And you think, oh, well, hang on a minute. This is now sticking out the front. It just lips to the back like that. Uh, and if you've got one of the later machines where this, thing, this bit here isn't attached, it just clips on. You obviously just take it off and clip it in the other way. So, um, most machines can take two yarn rods. I don't know if you can see my SK behind me. Uh, there we go. It's got, whoop, it's got two yarn rods on it and uh, two yarn masks so that I can always have four lots of yarn threaded up. But uh, this one's only got one. So, there's uh, two slots on the handle at the back of the machine. You can choose either one to put your, uh, your yarn mask in. And then... Lift up to show this. Your uh, yarn assembly just sits on the top here. And this bit underneath just uh, rests on the top because I've got the two machines here. It's going to kind of crash into one another. Just take that one now. hook them into the, the front feeders here and I'll just get me lined up again so you can see that I've got it sitting on top of the mast and here and then the wires are caught in this front bit here so it's not in use so right, let's put you down again get you lined up So, um, all those things being equal, you should now be ready to start knitting. Um, I'm not going to do that on this video because there's plenty of other ones where we will show now to start knitting. But um, I hope this uh, little bit of guidance has been useful for you. And uh, if you've got any questions, well, uh, post them on the page. Thanks very much, everyone.